Shoguns with greenish skin. So close your eyes and you will find that you've arrived in Frankenstein. Perhaps the Count will find a way to make his monster work today. For if he solves this monster mania, he can return to Transylvania. So welcome where the sun won't shine to the castle of Count Frightenstein. <laughs> Right, you little devils. Flower, flower on the wall. Which of you will glow so tall? <laughs> Never mind the singing, Igor. What was that horrible noise? It sounded like hail. Yes, master. It's hailing outside. And why were you so late? I'm sorry, master. I was just walking along singing a little ditty. Sing a little ditty? Yes, master. We have no time for such matters now. For now, we must raise the flag. Yes, master. And sing our glorious national anthem. Yes, master. Hit it, Igor. Glory, glory, Transylvania. Where werewolves and bats will always behave ya. The mighty wood will likely claim ya. As we go stumbling through. I pledge by the sign of a three-toed slaw. <coughs> But I will do my best to do my duty, to always obey the laws of the werewolf fight. And to never last until Bruce he leaves once more and takes his rightful place in the annals of distinguished monsters. And I, I can once again return to my most glorious of homelands, Transylvania. Gory, gory, trots away, hey. yo, as we hey. go, hey. stand, hey. play, hey. <laughs> throw. Of course it was beautiful, I know that. I'm a count, and everything I do is beautiful. Explain yourself. Now, what were you doing? I was outside, master, walking along in the hill, singing a ditty. What was the name of the little ditty you were singing in the hill? I was singing... Let us smile be your umbrella. And what happened then? The hail broke my teeth. It should have broken your head. <laughs> Among the other things he'd lost at sea were his suitcase and his trunk. An elephant without his trunk's a sight that's seldom seen. He came to visit Pet Vet, and he was feeling mean. The doctor told him, simmer down, we'll soon replace your nose. <laughs> and now where once there hung a trunk, you'll find a garden hole. Always bringing me or sending me such beautiful pets. Yes. You have good, good. When it comes, I'll call you later, tell you how I like it. I'm sure I'll like Oh, there's the bell ringing. Goodbye, I'm going to run along now. Thanks, eh? Bye-bye. Pets are friends. I always remember, yes. Goodbye. Let's see. What kind of... I'm coming. Oh, hello. Oh, thank you, Mr. Messenger fellow. Oh, nice fellow, that messenger. Not like the postman. <laughs> Hello there. What kind of a dog are you? Oh, look at you. Hey, sit down. Yes, come and sit by me. Oh, yes, you my Oh, beautiful dog. Oh. I just want to read a letter the Dr. Pedvet sent about you. Yes. What about kind of dog? Ah, here we are. Dear Igor, today I am sending you... A very unusual dog, it's called 
Akies Hond. K E E S H O N D. Oh, it's unusual. This is the national dog of Holland. Mm. He sends dogs from all over, this Dr. Pedvet. Hey, his name is Cookie. Hey, Cookie. <whistles> Cookie. <whistles> Cookie. Huh? Doesn't listen to me. Doesn't matter. In Germany, the same kind of dog is called a Wolfspitz and looks like a wolf. That's why it's called a Wolfspitz. In French, it's called a Lulu. <laughs> These dogs are bred as companion dogs and therefore make excellent family and house pets. They were the mascot for the peasants of the Middle Ages. When William of Orange conquered the peasants in Holland, oh, all the Kirschhunds had to be hidden because they were considered a symbol of the peasant rebellion. My, that's a heroic kind dog, this one. Recently brought back into popularity, this dog is just a friendly dog. He's never used for hunting and he's nice for playing. And when you comb him, you have to comb him backwards because his hair is like, oh, he's... I love to keep this dog. Oh, he's such a cuddle. Hello? <laughs> oh, Dr. Pitman, when I saw that, I was so excited. Unusual, beautiful. Can I keep him? Wow. I have to ask the old slot, Grumples. But maybe for once you'll break down. Okay, hang on. Cookie, come. We're going for a walk. Come on. Cookie. Come on, come on, Cookie. Cookie, Cookie, come on. Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. Slot, I'd like you to meet Cookie. That's the way to, for our introduction. I said, you go, no. He's a grumpy old. <laughs> Hello? No good. And I had my heart set on this dog. He's such a beautiful, unusual dog. Okay, Dr. Pedvet. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come on. Just imagine a three toed sloth. Don't go away. We'll be back, I'm afraid. Transylvania, here I come. I busted the window. All right, pull on over there, Igor. Yes. This is a grammar raid. I knew that. All right, Igor, grammar slammer time again. Grammar slammer bammer. Yes, and it's grammar oh. slammer bammer time, too. So oh, sit oh, down oh. and get ready to pay the piper. How much does he charge, bammer slammer bammer? Quite a lot, Pressure but never mind. Pump. It's time to get your English repaired, Igor. You have the worst grammar around. Mm -hmm. Around what? What? Igor, do you realize that you were heard to say, I busted the window? Now let's have a replay, an instant oh. replay of that. <laughs> wrong. Wrong, Igor. Yes, I said that. Well, why in the world would you say that? Well, oh. there's something else to say when you busted a window. Igor, you're not following me. <laughs> Where are you going? Grammar Slammer Bammer is waiting. Not just yet there, Bammer. Igor, oh. that sentence. I busted the window is wrong. You must correct it. Now fix it. I'll fix it tomorrow. <laughs> really? <laughs> but but I need some more paint of glass. Igor, fix the sentence. I busted the window. I didn't bust the window? Oh. No. <laughs> I didn't think that would work. Uh, I busted part of the window? No. Uh, I busted all of the windows? Just once. No, Igor, mm. you don't say, I busted the window. You should say, and let's see it now. The corrected version is, I broke the window. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Uh, would you like to say that again? I broke the window. Uh, say it once more. I broke the window. Uh, count, uh, master, uh, are you listening? Uh, say that once more, please. I broke the window. A little louder. I broke the window. You see, master, he did it, not me. I broke the oh. window. Uh, uh, what a sight.
The professor got a telescope and stayed up half the night, observing constellations, stars and planets in their flight. He focused on the moon a while and stood and took a bow and said, I have discovered what the moon is made of now. Some people think it's made of cheese, but that's a big mistake. With all those holes it's plain to see, it's made of white sponge cake. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, and people everywhere, and my friends abundant? I am the professor. Julius Sumner Miller is my name. And physics we do. And this one is most, most dramatic and exciting. Come with me to a boiling pot. A boiling pot. Here is a chamber, a spherical flask, in which we have been boiling some water. You see the water's boiling. Now, boiling, boiling, oh, that's a very difficult process. It would take me an hour to account for it properly. But anyway, the vapor pressure of the water is equal to the atmospheric pressure here, and we say the water is boiling. Now I'm going to, I'm going to take the heat away and stop her up, stop her up, oop, stop it up. There, I'm having a little trouble. I'm, oop, I'm having a little trouble. There it is. I'll get it all right. Whoop, there, notice I'll get it all right. The pressure here is giving me trouble, but that's how nature behaves. And now I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to get rid of that. And now the water has stopped boiling. The water has stopped boiling. Watch it. Very difficult sometimes experiments are to do. Watch it now. The water has stopped boiling. It has stopped. Now, if things have not gotten bad for me and nature, I'm going to make that water boil, not by adding more heat to it, but rather by taking heat away. Watch it now. Look at that. Look at that water boil. And I'm pouring ice water on there. And I'm making that water boil. There it is, boiling again by pouring ice water on it. Outside. And I'm going to do something more dramatic. I'm going to lay my hands on there. First, I'm going to get them a little cool with the ice water because I don't want to get burned by that hot vessel. Watch now. Boil! Boil! <laughs> if I say in this castle water boil, what must it do? It must boil. Let it quiet again. See, I'm just cooling my hands so it has stopped boiling. Watch it now. Boil, 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 there it does. And how long could I continue this? For a long time, because this is a place of great mystery. Great mystery. Watch it, watch it. I'm gonna make it boil again. And why am I doing this so much? Because I think it is very, very mystic and dramatic. Boil. It's boiling a little, but I haven't taken enough heat away, so it can't boil. So somebody says, why, that man is mad, and I admit I am a little. But you have to be a little mad to work best with nature. Boil. There it's boiling. There it's boiling. And now we should look at it and ask, why is it so? And that is a powerful question. Why is it so? And these matters I will explain in this fashion. Let this be the flask. Let this be the water in it. And I have boiled the water. And I have driven out all the air and the occluded gases wrapped up in the water so that this place is filled with water vapor and then I stopped it up, and then I took the water away, and it stopped boiling. Now what did I do? I put on my cold hands, or poured on some ice water. The water vapor in here condensed back into water, and now, of course, the pressure in here is very low, 
and water can boil at a lower temperature at a lower pressure. And so, in this instance, if you will allow the reference, by the laying on of my hands, this mysterious business was accomplished. By the laying on of hands, mysterious businesses are indeed accomplished. And I think that's wonderful to contemplate. Boiling water at nearly the point of freezing. And I thank you for watching. <laughs>
But first, I would like to give you my impression of the three-toed sling lomba. Here we go, the three-toed sling lomba. All right, I hope it oh. You'll excuse me, please. I don't wish to be rude, but... Yes, hello. I want a Clyde batty, yeah? That's right. Oh, I see. I see. All right. Well, you bet I will. Thank you very kindly. Right. Well, that's a very nice person who has one and would like me to repeat that on another occasion. But now we must get back to our film, all right? So here we go. We're going to see something you're just going to love and something you've seen before, I'll bet. Now, over to the camera. Let's make sure we're in readiness with our film. Here we go. Very nice to switch on. And away we go. Oh, and look what we have here, the bison. Now, on our last safari, we went to Western Canada. That's where we came upon what is known as the bison. Although it is often called a buffalo, that is quite incorrect. That means it's not right. Characterized by an enormous development of their shaggy forequarters, topped by a hump just behind the neck. You see that there? See that hump right up there, fellow on the left there? Oh, yes. Oh, look, look at the shaggy coat on him. Yes, yes. Now, the horns are small and they're set very far apart on the rounded forehead. Their voice is more like, oh, I say, uh, it's more like a groan than, than a lowing kind of sound. Bison's coat is dark brown in winter and slightly, uh, oh, lighter in summer, actually. Now, the largest males reach six feet at the shoulders and a weight of one and a half tons. Oh, goodness gracious, that's quite a bit, isn't it? 3,000 pounds. Now, bisons feed on grass mostly in the morning and evening and rest during the day. Now, it passes its time just grazing away and chewing its cud. It's like an old cow sometimes, sleeping or going down to the water hole, frequently loll in dust or mud, and then rub against shoulders. That's trees and other objects to get rid of all them bugs and parasites on them, you see? Yes, that's right. Oh, look at it. Isn't that lovely? Oh, my goodness. Now, yeah, usually the cow or female is leader in the family group, you see? Families made uh, seasonal migrations of hundreds of miles to find better feeding grounds because they do eat up quite a bit. Oh, I think that's most interesting. Quite lovely, quite lovely. Don't you agree? I think so. All right, this is Bawana Oi Batty saying goodbye to you and remember what we always say. Ooga Booga, which means the lamp lit at night does the better thing than in the day if needed to be called upon for any emergency whatsoever you may see fit to know. All right, so away we go. All right, mates, coming now. Off we go. All built to take. Coming with it. All right, hold on. Too much. And now, commercial. I like the librarian. Librarians forget a lot, or so I have been told. They don't remember anything when they get very old. I knew of one of them who got himself into a tizzy. Remembering what he forgot was keeping him quite busy. I said, forget forgetfulness. He answered, thanks a lot. I will remember that, but please, what was it I forgot?
authority. Of the cat. Or rather, what? No, the lion and the mouse. Yes, of course. Well, that's that's a big cat. <laughs> One day, a mouse happened to run over the paws of a sleeping lion. <clears throat> Angrily, the mighty beast awoke and seized the offender. <laughs> He was about to crush the little animal when the mouse cried out. Oh, please, mighty monarch, spare me. Are you frightened? I would be only a tiny mouthful, and you would not relish me, no. <laughs> Besides, I might be able to help you someday. You never can tell. The idea that this insignificant creature could help him amuse the lion so much that he let his little prisoner go. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> Sometime after this, the lion, roaming the forest for food, was caught in a hunter's net. Yes, the more he struggled, the more he became entangled. His roar of rage echoed through the forest. Hearing the sound, the mouse ran to the trap. <laughs> and right away he began to gnaw the ropes that bound the lion. Oh, don't be frightened. <laughs> be horrified. <laughs> it was not long before he had severed the last cord with his little teeth and he let the huge beast free. <laughs> and do you know the moral of that story? Well, the moral of the story is do not belittle little things. <laughs> Are you terrified? Well, I would be, but I'm too tired. So now the librarian must bid you adieu until next we meet. Until then. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye. Stand back, Stanley. I saw her first, and she's beautiful. We do not have guided tours. No, we're much too busy for that. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Who's there? Oh, there's some people wanting to take a tour. Excuse me. Oh. Hello, Count Frankenstein, at your service here. Hello, this is the Frankenstein Laundry and Dry Cleaners returning your call. That's right, I did call you. I'm afraid I have a complaint. No. Yes, I do. No. You see, when you sent back my dry cleaning, it was absolutely soaking wet. Now, yes. how can you explain that? Well, I can't, except the only thing I can say is we don't charge extra for it. Oh, well, that's not too bad. Hello, Count Frankenstein, at your service. Hello, this is Vincent down at the Goulmade shop. I want to know if you'd like to place your order this week. Just a moment, please. It's Vincent down at the Ghoul Maze. Oh, oh, we need some things, Master. What do we need? 500 pounds of bed steak. Are we that low? We're very low on bed steak. All right. Hello. Yes, Who I'd like this? to place an order, please. We Who would is like... this? This is Count Frightenstein. Oh, yeah. We have a direct line. I don't know why you should ask. All right. I would like to place an order for 500 pounds of bat steak, please, to be sent up to the castle. 500 pounds of bat steak? That's what I said. Well, that's 500 pounds of bad steak. How am I supposed to get it up the castle hill? Well, I really couldn't tell you. I can't help you there. But why don't you just wing it? Oh, yeah, I love that one. Hello, Count Frightenstein here at your service. Hello, Mother. Yes. Mother, I realize my clothes are shabby, but I'm doing the very best that I can. All right, I'll take care of it right away, okay? I love you too, dear. Bye-bye. There oh, was your mother. Boys are always boys to mothers. Hello, hello. Yes, hello. I say hello. Yes, this is the hello. This is the Frankenstein Taylor Shop. Oh, very good. Frankenstein Taylor yes, Shop. Yes, Frankenstein Taylor Shop. Tailor to the stars since 1423. Official Taylor Count Frankenstein is Royal Highness Count Frey. Yes, we are the Taylors. Yes, well we? said, because this is the Count Frankenstein. And as you recall, last year I purchased 
eight morning suits. Well, this year I want to vary that completely. I want a complete new wardrobe, so this year I'm ordering ten morning suits. Who is this? Count Frankenstein for the last time. Oh, in that case, it'll be 10,000 gulars in advance. 10,000 gulars? Why, you're not a tailor, you're a robber. Yes, that's me, Robert Taylor. <laughs> Hello, this is the Grope and Mall. Fishing tips at your service. Yes, could I trouble you for some fishing tips, sir? Yes, of course. If you're going fishing in this area, you best wear a heavy raincoat. Oh, well, you got to have some fun. Hello. Yes, yes, hello. this is the Frankenstone hello, hello, Driving hello. School. Uh, who is this? The Frankenstone Driving School. Where uh, our motto is, we strive to keep you alive when you drive. Oh. That's very catchy. Well, Who is I this? I thought so, I thought so. Who is this? This is Count Frankenstone. Who is this really? It's Count Frankenstone. No. Well, no. I own the place. Really? Yes, really. Can you give me a driving tip? Yes, of course I will. Now, if you want to go from trot to gallop, you just put your left foot down on the stone. <laughs> I thought I'd have a little fun with that. No? No, listen, I don't care what happens. I don't want any more phone calls. I don't care who it is. I will not answer anymore. Hello? Yes, this is the bank manager calling. I'd like to speak to the count, please. About his loan, it's been approved. Oh, hello, Mr. Bank Manager. The count said that he... The count said that he's always willing to listen to the bank manager. How are you, sir? Yeah. Groovy! <laughs> Back in a moment, I think. <laughs> Did you hear about the termite who lived in a bag of golf clubs? When he got so hungry one day, he made himself a hole in one. A hole in one hook? Yes, that's funny. Ah, lunchtime. <laughs> We held a party late last night for quite a classy bunch. <laughs> the trouble came when you-know-who announced she'd made the punch. Griselda's wild concoction began with turpentine. She added bits of ground glass, too, as I was soon to find. She brought it to the living room, insisting that we try it, and from that moment onward, well, <laughs> that party was a riot. Oh! Tomato, and it's my kitchen, so tomato it is. <laughs> Come on in, let's have some fun. <laughs> oh, we've got a winner for you today. We're going to cook up something that's really, really special, and it's called Bon Spiel Bologna on baked bagels with carrots. <laughs> so, here's how we start that one up we take one egg and put it back, we take two eggs and put it back. Then we take a little of this sauce and put it in the bowl. Very good. Now, here. Now we have some lost cargoes. Good. <laughs> you finally get it to work when you use a little force. Now, what are we here? No, oh no, I don't want to use that today. Oh, here's something very colorful. I just love this. We call this red moon dust. Oh, woo, sparkly poo. Oh, if I only had a gown in that shape. Now, we start to mix this, but we find it very hard seeing as we have very little liquid in it. Therefore, we will add a little of the old vinaigre, that's French for vinegar. Mmm! Oh! Woo! Wow! Oh my goodness, that's such smelly stuff, but so good, mixed in with the only other things. Oh, now it's taking form. Now it's really taking form. And speaking of forms, May West, eat your heart out. Well, here we go. Moving along quickly. Oh, my goodness. You look like a television camera with that on your head. So why don't you poly in, poly in. <laughs> now, as you well know, that cooking anything as involved as a Bonsfield dish 
couldn't get that out almost. There's just so much involvement in this particular recipe that what we really need is uh, a special little ingredient, which is a cup of electric crabgrass. Well, that looks very good. Let's take it over to the cauldron. And we are going to put it into the cauldron. Are we ready? Here we go. <laughs> Now, having done that, we now return to the bowl. And now we're going to, you know what? Uh, <laughs> it really hurts, you know? All right, here we go. And right into the old cauldron. Cauldron, cauldron, soil and shovel. Cauldron, oil. And cauldron, bubbles. Okay, taste it, time. Zelda, Gronk. <laughs> Igor, not again. Again and again, and one more time again. Ah, oh, this is getting boring. All right, what's in the mails today? Tell so, Master, first of all, we've got our magazine here called True Monster. Let me see that, please. True monster, yes. Oh, that looks very interesting. Any interesting articles in it? Yes, Master. There's a 17-page article on how I hunted the ferocious saber-toothed caterpillar ah. through unexplored jungles of Transylvania by your good friend, Maurice of Alcatraz. Oh, what does he know, eh? <laughs> Not much. Anything else in the mails? I'll check. A letter. A letter, very good. Oh, Frankenstein Board of Education. Oh, I want to hear this. This ought to be interesting. Ought to be. <laughs> Dear Count. That's me. That's you, Master. Your application regarding speech classes for Brucey Frankenstein has been received. We suggest that you come down with little Brucey and we can conduct a complete speech test on the young man and examine at first hand his minor speech problem that you mentioned. Yours truly, Louis the Slouch, Frankenstein Board of Education. Very good. And why not, eh? Why, as soon as I get Brucey going, you'll see, boy, we'll take him down there, won't we? Yes, master. Wait a minute. What are you doing with that? You treat this quite lightly, when you know very well that I can get Brucey going like that. Yes, master. Listen, Igor, and get this straight. When I get Brucey going, you're going to take him down to the Board of Education. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get him going as sure as the sun will rise tomorrow. Just yes. look at the weather forecast and I'll prove it to you. Brucey, I want your cooperation yes, on this. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Master, the weather forecast. Yes. The weather forecast for tomorrow. Uh -huh. You ready, Master? I'm ready. <laughs> Dark and rain all day. You think that bothers a cop? <laughs> <laughs> You know, they shouldn't really be that mean to the gorilla. Now it's time for me to answer one of your letters. And thank you so much for writing to me. I love to get your letters. Dear Oracle, that's me, huh? What is the significance of parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme in magic? Oh, it sounds like a line from a song. But anyway, I will try to answer that to the best of my ability, which is fantastic, isn't it? Each has its own particular use in magic. Now, for instance, parsley is mainly used in love potions in witches' witchments. And sage, sage finds a use in, in recipes for the prevention of nervous diseases. Now, juice squeezed from the, these leaves is said to stop an epileptic fit. Now, the evergreen shrub, rosemary, is said to improve the mind and the memory. And as for thyme, I think we've just about run out of that. What do you think, Voodoo? I didn't ask you. Look to the stars. 
We'll be back in a moment. Grammar slammer bammer. I just saw a lawyer with a steam iron. What was he doing? <laughs> he was ironing out his problems. <laughs> <laughs> Picture of loveliness, is it not? All right now, hi gang, how you doing out there? This is the Wolf Man, and he's coming to you through radio station E E C H, brought to you by the Count and his Dracola Company. Drink a drag, Dracola, and you're in trouble. Hold on, hold on. Hello, Count. No, no, just putting them on. Y yeah. No, it's unthinkable to drink the undrinkable, right? Right. Okay, sure, I know the pledge. Yeah, I pledge by the sign of the three-toed sloth, all that jazz. I got it. Okay, baby. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, gang. Now it is, you know what? Shine time. And the chant time says... Just about two. All right. <laughs> Not so fast. Let me see your badge. <laughs> of course. Yes. Yes, thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you for calling. All right, Igor, you try one. Frankenstone Fire Department? Yeah, there's, there's a fire. Help, help. There's a fire. There's a fire at the shoe warehouse. Just tell me a second. Fire at the shoe warehouse, mister. Well, how serious is it? How serious is it? It must be serious. It's already above the souls. It's already above the souls, mister. Well, don't worry about it too much. The place is full of heels anyway. Well, don't worry about it too much. The place is full of heels uh -huh. anyway. <laughs> I didn't even realize you made a funny oh, there. Oh, you know the card. Oh, Try that one. Frightenstein, 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 Wires Limited. Do you guys uh, tap phones? Sure we do. I'll give you a sample. Hang on. Tap toe through the tap taps in the telephone. Tippy, 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 tippy. I'll get this one again. Hello, Count Frightenstein here. <laughs> Sure, mother. It's easy for you to say. All right, Igor, try one. That was your mother. I recognized it. Of course. You can't miss that. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, can I have a large pepperoni to go, please? A large pepperoni to go? You got the wrong number. I'll fly this one, Igor. Hello, Count Frankenstein here. Ah! Uh, ah! Ah! Who, who was that, Master? Oh, I didn't know it was some girl, but she was a scream. Oh, <laughs> scream! Go ahead, Igor. Hello? Is Martha there, please? No, there's no Martha here. I think I'll try one of those. Hi. Hello? May I speak to Martha, please? Just hang on a minute. Hang on. Do you know somebody named Martha? No, I don't know Martha. No, there's no Martha here. Hello? I beg your pardon. May I speak to Martha, please? Just hang on a second. Hello? I'm sorry, there's no Martha here. I'll get the next one, Igor. I'll clear yes. this up once and for all. Hello, Count Frightenstein here. Hi, you all. This is Martha. Any calls for me? <laughs> As the spirit of our mutual body wanders on in children, this truth, indeed, has been seen by only those who can follow the yellow brick road. A small hawk has come back to campus, Casey. Hello there, Harvey Dingle Gooper. Oh, <laughs> I it's get a wall bit. banger. Harvey Wall Banger. Well, is there any mail for me today? Yes, there's a letter right here in front of me. Oh, here. thank you very much. Ah! 
Ah, there you are. You've been canceled. I've been canceled. You've been canceled. Never mind all the smart aleckness. That'll cost you four cents. Well, put it on the tab. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. All right. This says, Dear Count. Yeah, man. Is it true that the Wolfman really is a groovy guy? Signed, Jane. Well, Jane, first we're going to send you a picture, and on top of that, I'm going to answer your question. Yeah. And the answer to that question is, he is so far out, he's back in again. Ah, <laughs> that's, that's a good one, boss. I yeah, kind man. of liked it myself. Ooh, yeah, wow. All right, out. what is my account now with you? Right. How much do I owe you? You owe me four cents. Only four cents? That's right. Put it on the tab, I'm starting a new one. And tell tomorrow, then, when we meet again, Harvey... Ceiling dropper? No, 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 no. Uh, Harvey Wallbanger. He <laughs> why grog. The castle lights are growing dim. There's no one left but me and him. When next we meet in Frankenstone, don't come alone. That's the end of the show. Why don't you give your pet a hug? <laughs>